Hello. We want to welcome you to our show today, the Sunnyside Community Voice, uh, coming out of Sunnyside, Texas. Uh, today we're continuing our series on mental health. This will be our third show on uh, today, and we have some exciting guests with us uh, on today. Uh, to my right, as always, uh, our friend Robin from Robin's Haven of Hope. This is Ms. Robin Bennett. Uh, but our our new guests are uh, to my left here, to my far left. We have uh, Jenna Dyson, who is currently the executive director of NAMI, uh, the Metropolitan uh, Houston, and I'm going to let her explain what uh, NAMI is all about when we get to her. And we have Angela Brown, Angelina Brown Hudson, who is executive uh, assistant to Gary Eagleton, and this is from Eagle Enterprises. Uh, and I'm going to let her explain um, uh, her organization to you. Today we want to continue on with mental health because on the past shows we've talked about how mental health affects every family and it's a silent thing and we want to break that silence and uh, we are the ones who can because we speak out about it. So we're going to start with, um, with, uh, with Jenna and I want her to explain to us uh, what is NAMI all about. Thank okay. you, thank you, Ms. Shirley, and thank you, Ms. Robin, for inviting us on. NAMI Metropolitan Houston, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, we are the largest grassroots mental health advocacy organization in the country. We are the local affiliate of a national organization. So we have the larger umbrella, which is NAMI National, and then we have NAMI Texas, which is the state, and then us here in NAMI Metropolitan Houston. What we do at NAMI, we provide education, support, advocacy and we promote research to be done to help improve the quality of life for people that are living with mental illness. And we do and we do that through free education classes and support groups throughout the greater metropolitan Houston area. Thank you. That's good to know that we have uh, that we have that here. Uh, now Angelina, uh, would you tell us a little bit about your organization? Well, my name again is Angelina Hudson. I work with Eagle Enterprises as a consultant. And in our consultant firm, we do a lot of work around family strengthening and building uh, sustainable communities. So we work with teenagers, parents, um, in all walks of life, um, coming from all different histories. And one of those um, areas that we focus on also is mental health. And so um, I'm also a board member with NAMI. Um, and much of the work and collaboration that Eagle Enterprises has with the mental health community is through the NAMI organization. Now today, uh, I want to focus on, on last week we had uh, our guests uh, on last week talked about, uh, talked about depression. Uh, today we're going we're gonna to venture, because I understand that from, from what Robin was telling me, that uh, May the 3rd is Mental Health Children's Day. So we're going to focus on the children today. We're going to focus on, uh, uh, on them. Uh, and, and I'll speak from, I'll say first that even in my surroundings and people that I know, that there are a lot of, I hear ADHD. I, mm -hmm. You know, I hear, oh, that's a bad kid. I hear uh, he's got a problem. So we're going to focus on that today. And, and, and we want you all to kind of kind of tune in with us. Uh, I mean, kind of enlighten us a little bit on, on ADHD, because I know that you are into education and, and, and teaching. You're into, into helping uh, the families. So uh, we want you to, uh, to, to enlighten our audience a little bit on it, because I know that there are families out there that have kids that uh, they feel like they can't do anything with, uh, and, and all of a sudden a label has been put on them. So they need to know a little bit about that. So can you enlighten us on that? And either one of you can go first to me. <laughs> Go ahead, Angela. Okay, well, I, uh, if I work in the community with families that have children that are diagnosed with ADHD. Mm -hmm. I'm also the mother of two children that are diagnosed with ADHD. Mm -hmm. And uh, ADHD has three different designations. Um, there's ADHD, the inattentive type, where the child is forgetful or aloof or um, not able to focus, um, but very not very much a behavior problem. Then there's ADHD, 
um, the hyperact hyperactive child, who is the person, the child that's under the table, running around, not able to focus, a little impulsive, um, more than your typical developing child. And then there's the ADHD that combines both ADHD one and two, where they have both the inattentive type and the hyperactivity. Um, mine are on two polars of that spectrum. I have one who's inattentive and one who's hyper. And um, you can't really pay attention to the child without paying attention to the parent, I think. And that's what, what we offer uh, families mm -hmm. through support groups and the education classes. We offer them the training to understand the diagnosis, the symptoms, and more so the interventions and the preventative preventive measures that you can take in raising a child with ADHD. And one of the first things I always tell parents is you have to separate yourself from the child to the degree that you can take care of yourself and also take care of the child. Because of course if the parent is not healthy, then you really can't um, strengthen the child. And I guess the one question that uh, we were talking on our way here, the one question that's important to me is, is that, sh that the kid should be, uh, we don't label, we shouldn't label the kid without a firm proper diagnosis. Proper diagnosis. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times I see parents just say, oh, he's just got a, a behavioral problem. But have you taken the child to have the child yeah. tested to actually prove that? Because you could be treating the wrong thing. You could be looking at the wrong thing. Well, more than that, there's underlying issues to the diagnosis of ADHD. Mm -hmm. Many times if we see a child running or jumping, we say, oh, that's his ADHD going. Or even as an adult, if I'm forgetful or I feel scattered, I said, oh, that's my ADHD going again. But it's really not that simple. Mm -hmm. And um, rather than just call a person anything, bipolar or, you know, any type of label, mm -hmm. you should get the proper diagnosis because the diagnosis will tell you how to manage that illness, mm -hmm. how to take care of yourself, and how to be more productive as, as either a child or an adult. All right, today. Mm -hmm. We definitely agree. When you're looking at a child that has ADHD, we recommend that not only do you talk with the school, but you also get the counselor of the, at the child's school involved. You talk to your pediatrician, you talk to a psychologist. Even many school districts now have school psychologists that you can kind of consult with to talk about it. It's not a one quick measure, so you're not gonna just diagnose a child that is maybe being disturbed or showing some of those signs and symptoms within the month. It's usually an ongoing, at least six months of those kind of symptoms kind of existing mm -hmm. that kind of mm -hmm. makes you wonder and want to get some additional assessments done. Mm -hmm. So we definitely recommend that you really take a holistic approach and that you get a team involved to, to make sure that the diagnosis is accurate. Uh, for me personally, with my son being diagnosed, I solicit the help of the teacher, the assistant principal, a behavioral specialist in the district, as well as the school counselor and his pediatrician, as well as my own assessment, mm -hmm. because I wanted to make sure that we had some thorough kind of signs and symptoms that we wasn't just basing this on just I is just impulsivity mm -hmm. um, for us personally it took about 90 days because I didn't want to rush the process mm -hmm. even though in my heart I I knew but I really wanted to make sure that we have done everything that we could meaning that house the structure at home house his diet house his extracurricular activities mm -hmm. house the structure at school mm -hmm. looking at all of those things before I'm just label him with ADHD. Mm -hmm. And even though we say label, to me it was relief because now I felt, wow, so I'm not doing something wrong as a parent. Mm -hmm. Because when you hear people around you, well, you need to do this, you need to do that. And I'm like, I'm doing all of that. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. with the diagnosis, it gave me relief because then I was like, okay, so there is something biologically going on with Josiah mm -hmm. that I can't change. But what we can do now, we can learn how to manage these symptoms. We can learn how to work with him. So for us, it was relief, it was comfort. And then I started looking at just different people. I'm like, wow, look how successful they are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So looking at it and understanding that there's a season for everything in life mm -hmm. and that you go through things for a reason and that this is just another part of how we're gonna give God the glory of this situation. Because now not only do I have the clinical background and I'm an advocate, but now I have the personal experience. So I can give our families a little bit more than I was previously not able to give. Exactly, exactly. And Robin, have you been involved with, with anyone with, uh, with ADHD? No, uh, I'm being very educated by Angelina and Jenna. No, Ms. Shirley, this is all new to me. That's right, I'm so quiet because I'm taking everything in so I can recognize the symptoms 
if it's anyone in my family, if it's any of my friends. No, this is all new. I only hear, like, I watch Tony Braxton, Holly Pete. You know, I just listen to their struggles. Mm -hmm. Now I actually have hands-on because I'm meeting a well-rounded person who works with children with it and dealing with her own children. I'm meeting a hands-on mother in the community and giving back for herself. And I must compliment you ladies for just oh, speaking out. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is all about, breaking the silence. Oh, yes. And Michelle, and I think a lot of our kids go undiagnosed mm -hmm. for many reasons. I think we as parents kind of say, oh, that's Josiah's behavior, or that's a boy, that's what boys do. Or even the schools label kids as, he's a behavioral problem. And that was the direction we were going, with Josiah even being six, where he was being looked at as a child that has a behavioral problem. Mm -hmm. Now with this ADHD, it gives Josiah a little bit more protection. Mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. he's not a behavioral. This is a clinical diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Now the school has responsibility and then even myself as a parent, we ha I have a responsibility. Mm -hmm. So it gave me more of an advocacy kind of voice. Mm -hmm. Now I can truly advocate and make sure that the school is doing their part. And it also provided protection for Josiah, for Josiah mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. we all want to do what's in the best interest of him. Yes. So that diagnosis provided relief and that protection that we that needed. That is so good to hear because uh, as Robin was saying, we don't want to talk about it. We don't want to uh, We don't want to say something is wrong with our children. We want our our kids to be uh, to be that perfect child. Right. And, and, and when they're diagnosed with this, what we do is we, we, we hide behind it and, mm -hmm. we, and we don't want anyone to know it. But just as we're sitting here talking now, this alone can help someone say, right. well, let me go and get my child. Uh, you know, I've seen this happen in Johnny, so now I'm going to go and I'm going to, you know, get my child, child tested. But what I am hearing from you two mothers is, is that it takes a lot of involvement on the parents' part. And I was about to mention that. Yeah. Um, I think Hillary Clinton said it a while back, it takes a village. Mm -hmm. And um, some of the work that we're involved with with Eagle Enterprises is the 40 developmental assets, mm -hmm. which is sort of a framework. And it was one of the first pieces that I embraced as a young mother with children. I actually have three children that have neurological disabilities. The two have ADHD and I have one more with autism mm -hmm. and sensory integration disorder. And and that's the child that really got my attention because, of course, his needs were much more significant mm -hmm. and his disability mm -hmm. was much more pronounced, to mm -hmm. say the least. Mm -hmm. um, but I recognized early on that if, if our family was going to be saved, if, if in fact, I was, you know, we were going to raise three successful children, that is, independent, able to carry on successful lives, then it was going to take more than me and my husband had to offer. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's, the, that's the takeaway here today. If we're looking at children's health and children's mental health mm -hmm. on a particular day, then we need to realize that as parents, our goal is to raise healthy, productive children mm -hmm. that are not in prison, that are not incarcerated, that are not kicked out of school, that actually learn their reading, writing, and arithmetic, that, that do well and prosper and move on, you mm -hmm. know, as, as we predict future generations generations that's what we want as parents well we, then we do need to pay attention to their mental health mm -hmm. and get them the help that they need early on and that's one of the things that NAMI is so very excellent with doing we have a education class called visions for tomorrow mm -hmm. visions for tomorrow is a free class for parents that even suspect that, your, that their child has a mental illness. If there's not been a diagnosis yet and the parent simply suspects, okay, I'm having problems, um, I'm getting constant referrals from the school, mm -hmm. or I have a, a teenager that keeps talking about suicide and suicidal ideation, or I have, uh, you know, I have a young adult that's in college now, you know, but there's something not quite right. Um, now, for the child who's 18 or older, the class is called Family to Family families to families. But for children um, from birth to age 18, we have visions for tomorrow. And we cover 13 of your, of oh, your most wow. basic mental illness, all the way from ADHD to schizophrenia and schizoaffective disorder. And I just want to say this too, no one disorder is better or worse or more serious or less significant than the other. The, the road, same. the journeys that these parents go through, including myself and Jenna, mm -hmm. It is, a, it is a journey, you mm -hmm. know, and you have high days and you have low days. I think the message is to get help. You cannot do it yourself. And one of the other barriers to diagnosis when you were listing them is that the parent feels guilty many of the times. Yes. They feel beat yes. up on. Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> if you get a call every day or every week that this child is jumping up and down, mm. will not do what I say do, you just get <laughs> tired. And let me tell you, I have a 10-year-old now. I said, I just want to go a week without a call from the school about you. 
you know, so you just, you know, you just, you feel beat up on as a parent that the rest of the world is looking at you like you don't know what you're doing. Yeah, exactly. You know? exactly. And to that parent, I say, let's commiserate together. We have a family support group. Um, NAMI has support groups all over Houston, all over Greater Houston. Um, where Gary and I work is in Northeast Harris County, mm -hmm. um, from Humble all the way to Crosby. Mm -hmm. um, and we see a lot of parents from Baytown. And, um, and that support group is just for that, for parents to vent, mm -hmm. to discuss their issues. And group wisdom is the order of the day. The other parents who have been there, done that, they share with the parents who are just now mm -hmm. getting in. And we help each other through this walk. And, mm -hmm. and you can't get to the child without supporting that parent. Okay, mm -hmm. now the big question. 